if my phone drops, I'm sorry. I'm going to wait until some people come in. I have not been live in like two years. The last time I went live, I had a little hater <laughs> and they reported me. So what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Halloween. Yeah, tomorrow's Halloween. Um, but I said, you know what? Let me go live. See who's up on a Friday night. I'm in New York. Um, I don't know where y'all guys are, but y'all, when y'all come in, y'all can um, tell me where y'all from. I can answer some questions about narcissists if you want me to. But if your question is long, you're going to have to leave a donation on my cash app. Let me put my cash app at the bottom. Don't donate to Super Chat. Donate to my cash app um, or my PayPal. Let me see. How the hell I do this? Hey, how you doing? I'm going to be talking about how the narcissist or your same-sex friend, um, they're not always jealous of you because of your accomplishments. They're jealous of you because they're actually attracted to you. They're sexually attracted to you. That's what I'm going to be talking about. But I'm not going to start yet because I want some more people to come in at least give me like 20 30 people in here but i know i didn't make no announcement that i was gonna go live i got my spooky makeup on because tomorrow's halloween i don't celebrate halloween but um i do like to harness that energy how the hell do i put how the hell do, i don't even know how to type in this this is different this is so different i haven't been live in like two years but yeah, guys, so I'm going to be talking about how the narcissist or your, um, they don't have to be a narcissist, but your same-sex friend could be attracted to you and the signs that um, you need to be looking out for. Oh, hold on. There it goes. Wait. I don't even know how to type down there. That's strange. Okay. I don't know how to do it. But, yeah, get my likes up. Please like this video. You guys, if you come in, please like it. I would love that. Hi, Nicole. How are you? So, I'm going to be talking about... Please click like as you come in. Um, but before I start, I, um, I always love to support black businesses. So, this dope hat. My boo gave me this dope hat. And it's from um, a company called... Um, Dungeon Forward. They're on Instagram, so check them out. Support them. This stuff is like basically about um, black colleges, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I love this hat. And then this, anyone could buy this. It's also a black company. They're called Ancient Cosmetics. I don't know if you can see that. Let me take, let me see if I can take this selfie light off. Because that's too bright. Okay, that's better for me. Um, but yeah, um, this smells so good. It don't last all day, but it smells good. All right. So I got my wine. Um, so I don't know if you guys are spiritual, but you know, spirituality has really helped me, um, to heal from narcissism. And, you know, a lot of people, when they hear spirituality, hi Rhonda, when they hear spirituality, they think, oh, um, that's new age or that's, um, witchcraft or you know a lot of religious people have to understand that everyone is not going to have your same um spiritual beliefs and it doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> that person is worshiping the devil basically okay so um yeah spirituality has definitely helped me when it came to um healing from narcissism and uh i used to be religious i used to be christian so a lot of times people hear Halloween is coming. It's just like, oh, that's the devil's birthday, this, this, and that. Yes, a lot of people do harness um, negative energy and do crazy things on Halloween. But you also can take that negative energy and transmute it into positive energy. I ain't going to get into it, you know, how you can do it. But don't always think, you know, something that's dark or seems demonic, it really is, okay? Because how they make it, they put all the real shit in movies and all the fake shit in the world, okay? Um, so, yes, yeah, so I want to talk about how... So, I saw this quote on um, Instagram, 
and I was just like, oh my gosh, why didn't I talk about that on my channel? Um, so the quote was based on when you're hanging out with a friend, right? Who just came in there? I binge watching you. Oh, thank you so much. I really, really, I, anybody that supports me, um, I really appreciate it. People who donate still. I have such a small channel. I've been on YouTube for four years now. And I'm not consistent. I used to be very consistent. And that's why the channel hasn't grown as much. But that's because I choose to work on my spirituality and my personal life a little bit more than YouTube. But I'm going to try to be more consistent, guys. I promise you. Um, but yeah, so I appreciate those who also who book sessions with me i don't know if y'all know that i do um you can basically book me to talk to me basically so it's 15 dollars um for 30 minutes and 30 dollars for one hour so um all that information i'll put it below after i'm done going live because i can't figure out this is new i can't figure out how the hell to type on this shit <laughs> all right but anyway guys so i saw this quote um, on Instagram, and I can't remember her name, but her, her page is private, so this woman was breaking down how sometimes you can have a friend, or the narcissist, as a same sex, and they do this, okay, because I told y'all before how narcissists look at you as their spiritual husband or wife, okay, so even if you are a woman, and you're hanging out with a male narcissist, he's just your homeboy, or you're hanging out, you know, you're, you're a man, you're hanging out with a male narcissist. You know, it doesn't matter. Please click like when you come in. Um, they could be attracted to you. And this doesn't happen just with narcissists. I've been through this a few times in my life. So, yes, there's women in this, in this thread. I'm going to call it a thread. There's women in this thread on Instagram broke it down. I can't go on my phone and read it to you. But... I said, damn, I, I have spoken about this on my channel, I don't think, not in details, but this happens a lot and y'all get confused and y'all automatically think, oh, my friend is just jealous of me because I have a house or I have a car or I have this. Or I have... You automatically think they're just jealous of you because of the person that you are and it's, it's not real. it's deeper than that. Sometimes your same sex, who you think is straight, <laughs> who, you th who, who could be even married either a woman married to a man or a man married to a woman, they can actually be attracted to you sexually, okay? So I've been through this. It's a horrible feeling. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to quickly tell you, you know, um, what I've been through. So when you come in, please click like. I'm not going to be on long. I'm just going to go through the things I've been through and the signs to look out for and how the, these narcs, will use sexuality to get to you okay so anyway um this happened to me a few times and um when you're raised by narcissists um or you're used to attracting narcissistic friends you don't you don't pay attention to this right and a lot of people plot on you and a lot of people will use friendship not just you know, uh, the opposite sex, but the same sex. So use friendship to, to try to get you. Okay. <laughs> but you never see it coming. You never see it coming because you're so used to having that love or that attention from friends. Friends are extremely, extremely important. So I remember, um, uh, it started with me keeping my, I was raised by a narcissistic stepfather and, my father's mother was a narcissist. So I was I was always surrounded by narcissists. Okay, guys. So when you are raised by narcissists or you're used to being around narcissists, you basically um you're 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 used to the behavior. So that's the that's what love looks like to you. The the love that the narcissist is giving to you, the behavior, the the treatment they're giving to you. That's what you're used to. So naturally, when you go out into the world and you meet these friends, that's exactly what you're looking for. You don't know the good. You don't know what it looks like to have a, a, a ride-or-die friend, a person that's really nurturing you, a person that's going to put you... You don't know what it looks like. You're so used to 
um, shit, basically. So, naturally, all of my friends were narcissists, okay? But even when I healed, I still wasn't paying attention to these things because we tend to think, oh, I don't want to attract a narcissistic lover, but we don't realize that we're still going to end up attracting narcissistic friends even after we heal, okay? Please click like when you come in. Thank you, guys. If you do want to donate to me, my cash app is the dollar sign, the light 777. I don't know how to write down in the comments. So if somebody can write that in the comments for me, that would be great. Anyway, so I was friends with this woman. And keep in mind, guys, she was married. She was older. I was about, this is the first time this happened to me. And I did not know what narcissism was. So I'm about 19 years old at this time, right? And she was married. She was 29. I'm 19. She's 29. And I actually had a crush on her brother-in-law, okay? So um, I, I was hanging out with her. I was looking at her like more like a big sister, all right? So I'm telling you, these, 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 these be the signs, right? And... We're hanging out. Her husband was a DJ. So one night we decide to go out to dinner in a movie. I live in New York, so we went to Times Square. We ate dinner. We saw a movie. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is awesome. You know, I'm older. I mean, she's older. I'm younger. This is somebody who I can, like, hang with, basically. Learn things from. She's already a wife. She's already a mother. So I can learn things from her. Keep in mind, she was a Scorpio. <laughs> it's Scorpio season. I'm not trying to put your Scorpios down, but I'm just saying. So she was a Scorpio. And um, and I'm a Leo, by the way. And so we're hanging out. So she's like, oh, keep in mind, she lived upstairs from me. She lived downstairs. I don't know. She lived downstairs. I lived upstairs from her. So instead of me just going straight to my apartment, I, she was like, oh, why don't we um, go back to my place after we go out? So I'm like, all right, cool. No problem. So we go back to her place, and we're in her basement apartment. And I'm like, where's your husband? She's like, oh, he's DJing tonight, and I sent the kids to their grandmother's house. So I'm like, all right, cool, no problem. Um, Y'all could write, oh, there you go. The, I was wondering where the hell the comments were. Hi, Carissa. Um, if y'all have any questions about narcissism, you can um write it down. But if it's detail, you're going to have to donate to me. But anyway, yeah. So, I go to her, we go to her apartment, we're hanging out. So, she's like, oh, I'm about to go put on, um, dollar sign, the light, 777. Thank you, hun. Um, so, I, yeah, so we go to her apartment. So, she pours some wine, like, I got my wine right now. Thank you, love, from your, thank you, Carissa, you're beautiful, too. So, we're hanging out, and she, go gets, she goes gets her wine, and she goes put on lingerie. Keep in mind, guys, I'm 19, so I'm in my head like, I'm like, what? What's going on? So, I, you know, girls, girls get, you know, naked or get comfortable in front of each other anyway, naturally, right? So, guys, hit like when you come in. So... I'm not thinking of anything. I'm not a person that gets naked in front of my friends, but, you know, people are comfortable like that. So she puts lingerie on, guys. So she, I'm sitting at her, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Older women can be predators, yes. So I'm sitting at a computer desk. Yes, there he goes. Um, thank you, guys. So Rhonda just put my cash app in the um, comments if you want to donate to me or you have a, lengthy question for me donate at least five dollars and i'll answer it in the live um or i'll do a video for you if you email me okay anyway so she puts her lingerie on guys and i'm sitting in at her computer desk we're in her living room and then she lays on her sofa so she's laying on her sofa and i'm looking like in my head, keep in mind, at 19, guys, I was still a virgin, believe it or not. Okay, I grew up a Christian girl, was a good girl. So at 19, I'm still a virgin. So this is scaring the shit out of me, okay? So she lays down, and I'm looking like, this look like something I see in movies or, or porn, you know? So <laughs> I'm looking, and then she starts feeling on herself. So I'm just in my head, now I'm getting mad now, guys. I'm getting mad because I feel betrayed. 
I did not see this coming. I was just like, what the hell? I was mad that I even had to deal with the situation. And being 19, that's, that's still young, you know? Having to deal with that, you're thinking, you're bonding with this person, you're thinking that they're your friend. You would never think that your homegirl, you know, your girlfriend you're hanging out with is attracted to you. It happens, but I think it's a disrespectful way when they do this. And I do think that this woman was narcissistic. Heavy, heavy narcissist. Somatic, as they call them. So anyway, so she lays down and she starts touching on herself. And I'm looking at her like, is this bitch, is this bitch, for, is she for real? Is she serious right now? I, I could not believe that she was doing that in front of me, right? So now my guard is up and she says to me, well, what would you do if I came over there and kissed you? <laughs> so I say to her, I said, well, if you came over here and kissed me, I'm either going to kiss you back or I'm going to punch you in your face, right? So that was my indication to let her know don't come over here don't touch me don't even don't even think about it okay i can't see the comments i don't know what y'all saying let me see but yeah anyway i guess the comments will pop back up because i can't see nothing y'all saying guys this sucks anyway so um yeah so she doesn't come over to me so she goes i wanted to see how far she was gonna take it so she's like oh come to my bedroom Okay, and I'm sorry guys, yes, this is very, this is sexual content tonight, but I have to tell y'all, this is the crazy things that these narcissists, this is how far it can get, okay, if you don't pay attention to the signs. So I'm going to tell y'all this story. So this is some juiciness and tea tonight. So um, I go into her bedroom because I wanted to see how far was she really going to take this. So I go in her bedroom and she puts on porn, guys. Keep in mind, keep in mind, I'm 19, she's 29. I know a lot of you think like, okay, a 19-year-old and a 29-year-old, that's not really a big of a difference. It is a big difference mentally. It is, especially when she's 29 and she had her first kid at 15 and she's married with four kids. That's, that is a huge difference when it comes into maturity and me being 19 and me being a virgin. You know what I'm trying to say? So... It is. Sometimes just because someone's legally 18, it does not mean that they are mature enough to handle sexual situations. Okay, so this narcissist are very, very predatorial. Okay, so don't don't be like, oh, but you was grown. 19 is grown. No, not everybody is was out there at 19 sexing. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so um, she puts on porn and she's like, you're not getting horny. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I'm I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to go to sleep and I'll see you later. So she had this door. So there's these steps that could keep in mind. She's in the basement apartment of the house I'll be renting. And my apartment was on the first level. So I, there was a door that led from her apartment to my apartment. So as I'm walking up the stairs, she slaps my ass, guys. Okay? She slaps my ass. Like, like... And it just felt so masculine. And a lot of these narcissistic women, they feel, their energy feels very masculine. And that's why I don't understand how some people don't. I've never been around a narcissistic woman and her energy felt um, nurturing or her energy felt of divine feminine energy. Never. I don't know. If it's movies or magazines or society or TV has um, tainted people's perception and mind of what a woman is supposed to be. And I'm not saying that women can't be soft, but narcissistic women, it's almost like a man is in their body. So I don't see, I don't even know how people fall for them because they're, when, now that I'm looking back at all the narcissistic women I've been around, there was nothing soft and feminine about them. There was nothing soft and feminine about them. I don't even know a narcissistic woman who can cook well or who's just nurturing or gentle. There's nothing. They'll look good on the outside, but as far as the way their energy feels, they're extremely masculine. And she was too. She was masculine. She dressed very nice. She was an attractive woman, but the way she spoke to her husband, she spoke to her husband like a dog in the street. He was passive aggressive. You know, her children didn't like her. One day, her, her one of her sons said to me, 
um, Angie, you to be a good mother. Sometimes I wish that you were my mother. And she overheard it and she slapped the shit out of her son. And it's because they don't have a nurturing bone in their body. They don't, they're not soft. They're not nurturing. They're not feminine at all. Um, you know, and I, I get it. Some, some women aren't as feminine. I'm not saying you have to be girly and all that because even me, I'm, I'm an alpha woman and, you know, but I still, I'm still nurturing and soft at the same time. Um, you could be a boss and still be nurturing and soft and know when to lay that down. But narc women, they aren't or the same sex liking me. Um, and it was very disrespectful and it broke our friendship apart. And um, there was days where I stayed away from her. I didn't hang out with her like that after that. You know, it was kind of hard because she was literally downstairs from me. So I would have to see her when she's coming out the house. But I did stop hanging out with her. And there was days where I would walk past her and she would slap my ass. That's, some, that, that's disgusting. That's not how is this. My, I don't know. I have no idea where this woman is. I, I lost contact with her. This happened when I was 19. And we, we did speak until maybe I was maybe in my mid-20s. I'm 37 now. So maybe in my mid-20s, um, I had contact with her through Facebook. And one day I made a joke on Facebook. This was like years ago because I don't have Facebook now. I made a joke and was like, forget it. I'm done with men. I'm going to deal with women now. It was a joke, okay, because I am straight. Um, you know how as women we joke about that. And she she commented under the post and said, yeah, right, you're not about that life. So even years later, this narc still was upset that I rejected her, okay? I was 19 when this happened, and this I probably wrote this post at like 25, 26. And she was still pissed that I rejected her. They don't like to be rejected, you know? And it's sad um, that this guy ended up having... They ended up having six kids together, guys. Six children. They went back and he went back and forth with this woman. You know, she used him. He was a good man. Her husband was a good man. And they're not together to this day. So I'm very, very happy that her husband, even though they have six children together, I'm really, really happy that her husband finally uh, left her, left her ass. Okay. So yeah, you gotta understand that it's not always. Um, you got to keep your eyes open, not just for the lovers, the narcissistic lovers, but you got to keep it. You got to keep your eyes open with these with these men and these women that you're hanging out with. OK, like I told you before, my ex best friend was gay and uh, even he seduced me. OK, I've told that story before on the channel. Maybe I'll tell it again, but it is very, very possible. I think it's in my video about the. um. The homosexual narcissist. Y'all have to look for it. Because I don't want to go over that. But yeah. So even though I am healed. This happened to me again. Guys when you come in. Click like for me. I know it's only like 10 of y'all in here. But still click like <laughs> on the video. If you want to um, donate. Um, you can. Uh, my cash app is in the comment section. Zala sign. The light 777. And my PayPal is neoangie3000 at yahoo.com. Um, and you can also book sessions with me. Like, I, um, you can talk to me about anything if you want to. But it's $15 for 30 minutes and $30 for one hour. Okay. But, all right, I'm going to go on to the next story. So, last year, yeah, 2019. Yeah, I'm going to say between 2018 and 2019, um, I was, I was working, uh, nine to five. I'm not going to say where, but it was a customer service job. So, um, thank you, love. Thank you, Carissa. Um, do you have a question? If you, since you donated, put your question in the, um, in the comment section and I'll answer it for you guys. Um, if y'all have a question, y'all could put it down in the comment section. I'm going to try to see it because it's weird going, um, live on a cell phone. It's not showing me you know, what y'all saying in the comments, um, right now, like it's, it's popping up like maybe every five minutes. Okay. So, um, last year, <laughs> yes, it actually was going into, oh, thank you so much, love. I appreciate you. Thank you. And it, I get, I get a lot of love for such a small channel. Um, hey, precious, Yasino. Hello. Hey guys. Um, 
for such a small channel, I get a lot of love. And I like that. It's like I'm hidden, but I'm still there. It's, it's, it's very strange, and I'm thankful um, for the love I've gotten over the four years and the people I've helped. I, I tell y'all, I want to say I appreciate it. Um, I won't get teary-eyed on here, but I get a lot of emails and comments that are very beautiful and I'm very happy that y'all are growing and if my video has helped you I'm so 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 happy um to just help people because I know what it is to go with narcissists I know what it is to date narcissists to um to, uh hey Sebastian um oh hey Sebastian yes yes I really enjoy um, talking to you thank you for booking with me uh, not to put your business out there like that, <laughs> but yes, um, I, I'm just, I'm just, I love to see people. I, I notice that some people come to the channel, they grow and they leave. That's what I want. I want y'all to come, learn your lessons. I don't want y'all to be in that narcissistic cycle of attracting the same people. I think that if you are a kind person and the way the world is going now. You are always going to attract negative people, but you don't have to keep them there. You know, sometimes people say, oh, you are what you attract. It's not always that. Yes, sometimes you're a good person and that's why you attract negative people. Of course, negative people, who are they going to take from another negative person? No, they're going to take it from people who are filled with light, people who have information, people who are kind. They're going to use those individuals, but you don't have to allow yourself to be used and unless you were a child unless you were not informed and you know now so anything that happens to you now that you know is your fault it's the truth i even blame myself sometimes if i'm not checking myself i'm not looking out for the narcissistic signs or it don't even have to be a narcissist just a toxic individual I'm going to blame myself because I'm like, damn, I knew better, you know? So now that we have the information, there's tons of people on YouTube, you know, good and bad, who are giving y'all information. There's even narcissists out there who got channels. I ain't saying no names, but there are even narcissists out there. <laughs> hey, Passions and Healing Tarot. There's even people out there, um, narcissists out there, they have their own uh, channel and they put in information now. So at this point... In 2020, where we are, we have so much access to information and, and to heal. If we're not taking that on, it's our fault. Okay. So yeah, last year I'm gonna tell y'all this story before I get off. Um, but if y'all have any questions, y'all can ask me in the comment section. But um, so going into 2019, New Year's Eve, and thank you for the likes, guys, when you're coming in. I. Be, I befriended this girl. So she actually wasn't in the customer service um, department with me. She just randomly got put there because people kept quitting for my department. So I thought she was cool. Another Scorpio, guys. Like, what's up with y'all Scorpios? But you know what? Scorpios represent, I know some of y'all not into astrology, but Scorpios represent um, the genitalia area, okay? They rule that. That's why they say Scorpios are so sexual, okay? But anyway, this is another Scorpio. I, I'm not. I'm a Scorpio moon. Yeah. So my my emotions are very Scorpionic. But now I'm a Leo, and my rising is Capricorn. So anyway, um, <laughs> this is another Scorpio. I just realized that I had a lot of Scorpios try to seduce me or fall for me. This is. Hmm, I gotta watch out for y'all Scorpios. But anyway. I know it is an interesting mix. Yes, it's like I, I feel as if being a Leo and then having a Scorpio moon, it's like it's a little weird because it's kind of like I'm the life of the party, but I like to be kind of mysterious, too. So I hate when people always want to be around me all the time. But at the same time, it's like I like the energy, too. It's weird. It's just like a a weird mix to have it's I, it's like i'm transparent but i'm also secretive basically it, it, but it's a balance it's a balance but yeah so this other scorpio girl so i met her at work and i thought she was cool i, I blend very well with scorpios and um oh yeah and my narc ex best friend he was a scorpio too that's crazy but anyway 
I'm a cat with a moon with what? A moon in Pisces. Oh, okay. I like Pisces too. They're 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 less emotional than cancers. We sags are very blunt. My father was my father was a, a Sagittarius. I would say I like Sag women more than I like Sagittarius men because it's just like being around a jumping bean when I'm around a Sagittarius man. Their energy is too all over the place and they also have very narcissistic energy. Um, I've had a couple of Sag um, women friends and I would just say that they... They could be a little masculine. They, they don't play that when it comes to men. They will put men in check. <laughs> but yeah, so I met this um, Scorpio woman. They don't know how to stay still. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's like being around jumping beans. I can't, I don't like all that energy. My Scorpio moon be like, yo, chill. You're doing too much. You're doing way too much. They be all over the place. But one thing about Sagittarius I'll say is that they are big time hustlers. They know how to get money. Like my father, he was into that party life. He was into women, but he was a correction officer. He he fixed cars. He owned a car wash. Like he always had money. He always had a it was had a, a Mercedes Benz or a Cadillac. Like my pops had money. Like I I, I wish I had that energy because I'm too lazy to be doing all that. I like to do the le the least work. And make the most money. But he would do, he would have at least three or four different businesses going on. He always had money and cash flow coming in. So I would, you know, shout out to to um, Sagittarius. They know how to get that money. They do, whether it's legal or illegal. Just like Jay-Z, he's a Sagittarius. And look at that, he was a drug dealer. And now he's a billionaire in the, in the music industry. So it's like y'all know how to make money so i would definitely give that to sagittarius because i'm too lazy for that i'm not gonna lie i like to do the least work to get the most money <laughs> and sagittarius will go hard they will go hard for that dollar i'd be looking like i ain't doing all that um yeah so um sagittarius rising okay that's good that's good and you own two businesses you go girl Shoot, I you know it, it. Well, one thing I want to say, I have been unemployed since December 2019, and I've survived without unemployment, without any government assistance. So I'm very, very thankful to God, my ancestors, my spiritual team, for taking care of me in 2020. Because I never saw this coming. I quit my job because I got sick, and I never knew a pandemic was coming. I had no idea. So I'm very, very thankful that I've survived. Um, in 2020 without working a, a regular job, as they say, you know. Um, but yeah, so I have like little different businesses, you know, where money comes in. But y'all already know with entrepreneurship, you can have a great month and you can have a horrible month. Okay, so it's not always... It's not always a, a, a constant cash flow. So there's days where it's like... You know, I can eat shrimp and salmon, and then tomorrow I'm just eating french fries, you know. So that's, but you know what? It, I prefer the freedom um, that comes with um, being an entrepreneur. But yeah, so let me tell y'all about this this girl. Let me stay on topic because I will go all over the place. Um, so yeah, I met this girl, I'm going to say 2018 going into 2019. And I remember because... We actually spent New Year's Eve together going into 2019. So, um, I thought she was cool. And I remember, yes, it was 2018. So, I remember um, Christmas was coming. So, I don't celebrate Christmas. I don't celebrate any holidays. But I remember she gave me a gift. And I actually had the gift. <laughs> I still got the gift the girl gave me, guys. So, I'm into, you know, I'm into spiritual stuff. I'm into sage and crystals and all that stuff. All that stuff that y'all think is evil. It's not evil. All this stuff is natural that God has placed on earth. Isn't, aren't these beautiful? So, this is, um, I think this is clear quartz. So, she gave me these clear quartz earrings. So, I ain't gonna lie. She did give me a nice gift and I did keep it. And I blessed them and everything. So, her energy is off of it. But anyway, um, so... 
Yes, the girl gave me a gift for Christmas and I was like blown away and I was like, wow, she paid attention to details. So you got to understand these narcissists or these uh, um, these toxic individuals or just a regular person. I don't want to keep saying everybody's a narcissist. They pay attention to details about you. So she knew that I love sage. She knew that I love crystals. So she took details. And this is what a man would do or, a, a, you know, if he's courting a woman. He's going to pay attention to details. Oh, baby, what's your favorite flower? This is what the narcissist does. What's your favorite flower? What's your um, favorite ice cream? They pay attention to those details to capture you, okay? So she paid attention. She listened to me. And I'm not going to lie. We will be at work, get off work at 11 o'clock, and she'll call me when she got home. We'll be on the phone. But I'm talking to her like a sister, like a, like a girlfriend. I'm not talking to her... And like I want to build with her. So <laughs> one day there was a group of, I don't want to, listen, I don't have nothing against gay, lesbian, tranny, tr transsexual, um, uh, what else, what else is it? I don't be knowing what else it is. I can't keep up today, but I have nothing against people like that or that community at all, bisexual, whatever it is. But there was a group of pansexual and bisexual and lesbian women at work so you know how at work or at school there's always a clicks so uh they took a liking to me and i noticed that she hung out with them but she would talk about men so i was a little confused but i said okay maybe she's bisexual i don't care whatever you like you know whatever so this group of girls is around, uh, I'm going to say around maybe the holiday time. They say, hey, you want to come out with us? We're going to after work. Being that we all have the same shift, do you want to go out to drinks with us? So I said, yeah, sure, why not? I like to drink. I like to drink. Hey. Um, <laughs> so I go out with these girls. And the first thing that these girls say even before we get to the restaurant, they're like, well, I'm pansexual. Pansexual is when you're attracted to anybody, okay? You could be a man, a woman, a transsexual, anything, okay? I didn't know that. I did not learn that until they told me that. I had to go Google this, okay? So, um, so a lot of them were saying, I'm pansexual, I'm bisexual, I'm gay, I'm this. I'm like, okay, congratulations, guys. That's what's up. Good for y'all. So they, they said, do you have a problem with that? I said, well, do you have a problem with me liking penis? You know, I'm sorry, guys. I'm being kind of vulgar tonight. I said, well, do you got a problem with me being, you know, liking penis? Because I'm a straight woman. Can I still hang out with you guys? <laughs> yeah, penis. Oh, am I, I don't know if I'm telling it right, but penis, yeah, they're attracted to anything. I'm not talking about they're attracted to, like, animals or kids or something like that. But whatever they feel a connection with is what they go with. Um, like that singer Janelle Monet, she says she's pansexual. So yeah, she will date a a, a transgender um, person, a man, a woman, anyone they feel a connection to, they will date. That's what a pansexual is. So anyway, I said, well, do y'all have a problem with me being straight? Because I like penis. I don't date women. I'm not bisexual. Is that okay with you guys? You know, the, the sexuality or issue. They said, no, we just wanted to let you know, just in case some of us start talking about, you know, sexuality or whatever the case is. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's a that's huge. That polyamorous, if I'm saying it correct, that poly lifestyle is huge. I actually had a man try to recruit me into his marriage, but we'll talk about that after this. So, um... I said, well, no, I have no problem. So we're at dinner. I'm having a good time. I don't care about your sexuality. I'm just having a good time. So after we were at like a, at a mall, so we ate at, a, at the restaurant. The other women left. But this particular girl, she said, hey, let's walk around. I said, yeah, cool. So we walked around. We went into Century 21. We started picking up things and shopping together. And I said, wow, I like this girl. She's she's really cool. This is a nice girl. So from there is where we, we would talk every day. We had the same shifts. I had a good time with this girl. I had no clue. Keep in mind, she had a huge crush. 
on the singer, Trey Songs. So she really threw me off, guys, because she talked about men so much. She talked about Trey Songs like she was obsessed with him, okay? So I never, I never would have put one and two together, but then again, the energy was different. So one day, this is the first time... Yes, please hit the... Thank you, Carissa. I love you, girl. <laughs> You're helping me out. Yes, please hit the like button, or, or, you know, or come back later and hit the like. So I never would have thought that she would be attracted to me. But the first sign that I realized was one day I'm at work, and there was a pansexual girl at work, and she bought me a gift. It was around Christmas time. She bought me a gift, and... I turned and looked at the girl that I was hanging out with all the time, the Scorpio, and I saw her rolling her eyes and looking all like that. And I said, that's strange. Why would she, if I said I was straight, why would she care if this pansexual girl, you know, was giving me a Christmas gift? What What's that about? I, I, I peeped that. So you got to watch out for body language. Body language you know, growing up in a narcissistic home, I pay attention to body language, okay? I'll ask people questions, and I'll see their nervousness, how they play with their hair, how they start sweating. You have to pay attention. you got to be like a detective when you've dealt with narcs, okay? Pay attention to body language. Don't pay attention to what's coming out of people's mouths, okay? I even do this with my man, all right? He looking a little nervous about something. I say, yeah, he hiding something. He don't know that I do that, but... I pay, <laughs> I pay attention to those details and body language, and that will save your life. I believe it's because you give over such a loving, pure vibe. Uh, yeah, that is true. I do. It's like a motherly, nurturing vibe. Thank you so much. I, I agree. It's true. It's true. And y'all do too. And I are attracted to you. These nuts are attracted to you. So. I noticed that she she uh, gave the other girl a, a dirty look, but she didn't know I, I peeped it because she was busy looking at the girl giving her the dirty look, and I turned, and I saw that she looked at her like that, right? So, <laughs> I'm tired of narcs. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, yeah, some can't look you in the eyes. No, they cannot. They cannot. They be looking all over the... That's another... Yes, definitely narcs do that. They be looking all over the place, and... I used to have a narc, she used to play with her hair all the time. And that's how I always knew she was lying. She used to play with her hair all the time. Be looking all over the place. It's very, it's, it, when you think back, it's really easy to read these, these people. It is super easy to read these people. But anyway, so I noticed that dirty look that she gave the, the, the pansexual girl. I don't want to keep calling her that, but it is what it is. So I remember, um... I said, you know, what What are you doing for New Year's? Yes, covering their mouth. Yes. Changing the subject quick. Narcs will change the subject so quick. I mean, they will avoid, like, they only, you, when you think back, you be like, wait a minute. They never answer what I just asked them. What? They are good. They are good. They'll, they'll turn it right onto you. Okay? I like to do, my, my defenses, I like to repeat exactly what they said to me. That always gets, even if they're not a narc, that always freaks people out. I, I will repeat exactly what they said. Um, but yes, so I noticed the dirty look that she gave the girl. And I um, I was like, I took note to that. I said, hmm, that's strange. So so I um, later on, I said, well, what are we going to do for New Year's Eve? Because, um, you know, my mom died on New Year's Eve. So I always do something. So she said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I bought a ticket to a party. So she said, okay, well, I'm, I'm going with you. I said, really? She said, yeah. I said, you don't want to be with your family on New Year's Eve? She said, no, I'm going to go with you. She bought the ticket right there. It was in the um, break room. She bought the ticket to the party. She said, yeah, we, we can go together. We can hang out all night. I don't care. Like, let's do this. I said, okay, cool. So um before the party even came up we started talking and she said you know what i never told you this but i'm pansexual so i said oh okay so that that let me know okay she's trying to like kind of tell me that she liked me but i i, I was you know that kind of went 
over my head a little bit. But I said, okay. So she said, well, does that bother you? I said, no, it doesn't bother you. I accept you for who you are. Okay, y'all talking in the comment section. I'll let y'all talk. So <laughs> I can't read all that. So I, um, I, 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 I let her know, like, I don't care if you're pansexual. That's fine. I respect you, whatever. That's cool. So I looked at it. I know. This is called, um, what is this? Markovic Estates. Sweet red wine. I love red wine, but it has to be sweet. And I think it's like $14. It's not even expensive. And it lasts me like a couple of days, pretty much. But um, around winter time, I crave red wine. I'm not really a white wine type of person. But anyway, so the girl tells me that she's a pansexual. And I say, okay, no problem. I accept you. Nope. Nope, Nika. I don't, I, I don't, um, I have an Instagram, but I don't have an Instagram you know, for for my for my subs, because I like to kind of keep private. No offense, it's nothing like that. But I, I think I'm going to stop being lazy and create another account on Instagram so that y'all can, um, you know, chime in with me. But I, I'm just, I, I, I don't like to, you know, I, I even got rid of my um my Facebook. But anyway, let me, let me finish telling this story, because I know it's driving y'all crazy that I keep stopping the story. Cause I know I'm losing, I'm losing people leaving the chat. They probably like, Angie's not telling the story. I'll come back. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. So we both got our red wine. So, um, oh yes. Those of you who want to donate, my cash app is in the comment section. Um, Dallas sign the light seven, seven, seven. If you want to use PayPal or Zelle, it's Neo Angie 3000 at yahoo.com. All right, so long story short, this girl, I guess that was her way of letting me know that she was attracted to me. So what's funny is I was single at the moment, but I started to deal with a guy at work. Never did that before, but I did it. I started dealing with a guy at work, and I told her about it. Because, you know, when we meet a guy, we want to tell our female friends, whoever we're closest to, we want to tell them, right? So I tell her, I'm like, girl, don't tell nobody when I'm talking to so-and-so at work. That's when I saw the flames come out of this woman. Thank you so much, Carissa. That's when I saw the flames come out of this woman. She was like, I'm letting you know right now, you and him will not last. I give him two months and he'll be gone. And I was looking like, damn. So I laugh because when I'm nervous, I laugh. So I start laughing and I'm looking like, what the hell is wrong with this girl? Why is she acting like this? Keep in mind, she was talking, you know, to other people and stuff like that. So I was just like, what the hell is wrong with her? It was very uncomfortable. She said it to me while we were over dinner. And I could see if I, if I spoke poorly of this guy that I was talking to, but I didn't. I didn't say anything negative about him. So she said, yeah, she was just like, I'll give y'all about two months and it will be over between y'all. He doesn't deserve you. He's this. He's that. Huh. Yeah, right. How could you give him a chance? So she was pissed, guys. This girl was pissed. She was so pissed that basically I was not too single anymore, so to say. Yeah, it, it, it was scary. So that kind of made me draw back from her some, but I still hung out with her. We still um, hung out with each other for New Year's Eve. And I noticed also another sign is like, with these women, <laughs> these narcissistic women, ladies out there, even if you're a man and you're hanging out with a narc man, they're going to treat you like, they're going to try to wine and dine you. This, every time I was with this girl, she wanted to buy me gifts. She wanted to buy me um, she always wanted to pay for dinner. She'd be like, she used to say, when you're with me, you don't got to worry about anything. I got you. And I was just like, it just, it just felt strange, but, but I just never think like somebody's attracted to me. You know how I, I know I'm not ugly, but I'm never thinking, oh, this person wants me. <laughs> you feel me? And it was just so weird. Like every time we go out to dinner, if we're taking an Uber, nah, girl, I got you. She's talking to me like how a guy will, how, how like 
my man treats me. It was it was just so strange. And I was just like, hey, okay. You know, Leo's, we love nice things. So we're like, okay, you want to pay? Go ahead, you pay. You know, go ahead and pay for the dinner. Go ahead and pay for the Uber. It wasn't, it's like she never wanted me to buy anything when I was around her. She never allowed me to pay for anything when I'm around her. And everything was just like her trying to impress me. Because, you know, like when you're dating somebody, in the beginning they try to, they try to impress you. So I noticed she was more masculine than I was. So she had like a short haircut. So she so she noticed that I like feminine things. So guys, guess what she did? Because you see how I always got my nails done. My hair is always done. Y'all know me, but I'm a hairstylist. So that's just natural for me. Guys, you know what she did? She went out and bought a wig. She went out and bought a long wig. She went and got her toes done, her nails done. She went and got her a sexy outfit for New Year's Eve. And she was, I guess she was trying to show me she could, she could be feminine, you know what I'm saying? And then she was like, she asked me, she said, do I look more feminine to you now? And I was like, yeah, girl, you do, you do. <laughs> she really did it. She really did it. She looked like a boy trying to dress up. No offense. She really did look like a boy trying to dress up. It was, she wasn't an ugly girl, but she just has so much masculine energy you know it was she didn't have sex appeal you know so um yeah girl I, she put on she had her nails done she had a wig on she was really trying to impress me as if like a guy would come and impress you with flowers and candy and gifts and stuff like that it was really really strange and um i peeped it you know but at first yeah she had on heels too Yes, she had on heels, girl. And I peeped it, but a lot of times you'll think, oh, this girl, she's trying to just be like me. Oh, she's trying to steal my style. It's not always she's trying to steal your style. She's trying to impress you because she wants to get in them panties, okay? So after we hung out, because um, so we went, we went to like a, a party in the city in Harlem, actually, Harlem, New York, and we had a good time. And that night, guys, she would not let me buy my own drink. She, <laughs> I guess she wanted me to get drunk. She she paid for my drinks and everything, guys. She paid for the Uber home. Um, she came back to my place. And I remember she was sitting in a chair. I was sitting on my bed. And she was looking so... I remember she was looking so nervous. And I'm looking at her like, why is she looking like that? I'm like okay, I ain't gonna lie. I was I was twisted. I was very tipsy when she when she came to my house. I guess God, she thought it was gonna happen that night. I guess she was like, oh Angie's drunk. I'm about to get them panties. Oh no, you wasn't, girl. I was I was thinking like, where the man at? <laughs> That's what I was thinking like, where where the man at? I wish a man was here. You know, I I, I I'm joking about it, but it's not funny. <laughs> but um, it probably was about six o'clock in the morning when I was like, girl, I'm tired. Uh, you want me to put you in an Uber? You got to go home because you can't sleep over here. So she said, okay, no problem. I'll go, I'll go. But she was looking so nervous. I guess she thought something was about to go down between her and I. And um, what did I say? I went through a lesbian phase. I discovered lesbians are not play. Yeah, lesbians don't play. Yo, women, lesbian women don't play. When they want what they want, they go for it. They don't play that. So, um... Yeah, it, it was really, really strange between us. And um, once she saw that I was dealing with a guy from work, once she saw nothing happened, she didn't get in my panties on New Year's Eve, um, she started to draw it back. I would call her. She wouldn't answer anymore. And that's things that guys do. They ghost you. A guy will ghost you if he's not getting the drawers, <laughs> okay? And I was just like, I would call, but sometimes she'll pick up and say, hey girl, you okay? What's going on with you? And she'll just be like, oh no, I'm busy, you know, I'm okay, I'm fine. And I'm like, all right. She actually ends up quitting. She quit the job. I, I don't want to say it was because of me. I don't want to say she quit the job because of me. I, I think she quit the job because she had family issues. Um, but I did find it strange that she was working at the job for three years and then randomly quit now that we became friends. But she quit, and I, guys, I never saw her again. So that was in 2019. I never seen a girl again. I never heard from her. 
I heard through the grapevine that she that she works at the mall now. I haven't seen the girl. I call her phone. She didn't answer. So yes, another thing. Men don't scare me. Narcissistic men do not scare me, or regular men don't scare me. <laughs> Healthy men don't scare me. It be the women. Women are scary, okay? Women scare the shit out of me because women, it's like, I guess women are not used to rejection, so they get a little psycho path ick, you know? So women, when when we're rejected, we we go hard. We go hard. Men, they get rejected like every five minutes. They're used to it. But when a woman is rejected or when a narcissistic woman is rejected, it's a whole nother ball game. And I was hurt, guys. I really liked that girl as a friend. I thought she was so cool. But the whole entire time, she won my panties, guys. And the signs are there. And, you know, I actually right now have a, a, a friend that I've known for, I've known her maybe for about over 10 years. But she doesn't live in New York. Um, and she's giving me those same kind of signs. And, um... I don't like it. I don't like it, you know, and the only thing I want to say is, it, okay, I get, even if, even if, it's okay for your friends to be attracted to you, but it's not okay, whether you're a narcissist or not, it's not okay for them to disrespect you, to throw shade at you, to um, uh, wish, wish bad on you when you meet somebody, and this is why with my friends, I keep my relationship very private. They be like, how your man doing? He good. He alive. He breathing. What's going on with y'all? Nothing. Nothing's going on. We're good. I'm fine. Really? Yep, I'm happy. He happy. I'm happy. He's fine. I don't talk about it because a lot of a lot of times you can't talk to your friends about your business. Okay? They will try to create something that's not there. They'll try to project um, their issues onto you. You know? And this particular friend who I think is attracted to me right now, I notice she doesn't care when I'm talking about female friends. That doesn't really bother her. But as soon as I mention, oh, I'm in a relationship. Oh, I, this guy treats me well. That's when she's like, hmm, well, I don't know about that. You know, and they make up anything. It could be like, oh, he had on a black shirt? Mm. I don't know. They say men who wear black are evil. <laughs> you know, they be making up all stupid kind of shit that makes absolutely no sense to throw you off. And when you trust that person and you've been friends with that person for so long, sometimes people's words can penetrate your mind. And you're like, damn, maybe they're right. And then they'll, throw, they'll sabotage your relationship. You go to your man or your woman and you start looking at them funny or you start questioning them and you really don't have any reason to question them. So this is why I'm very private. That's my Scorpio moon sign. I'm very, very private. I'm transparent, but I'm also private with certain things, you know, especially when it comes to money, when it comes to my love life, or I don't even talk about sex with my friends. I just keep those things to myself, you know. But you have to be very careful because um, you never know. These narcs, they will um, prey on you, and you never see it coming. So, yes, it doesn't always have to be the opposite sex narc. It could be the same sex narc. It could, it'll have to even be a narc. People will use friendship to get in your drawers, <laughs> okay? People will use friendship to get in your panties, to get in your boxers, okay? And it happens, and it's, it's happened to me more than once, so I know for sure. And just because they're copying you, just because they're doing nice things for you, you know, we have to get out of our ego. A lot of times, we're, like, so happy to meet somebody that is like us. I want to see the comments, but I can't see it. Sometimes we're so happy to meet someone who is like us or um, who's stroking our ego that we don't realize that shit is fake. Nobody should be stroking your ego 24-7. That's not real. That's not a real relationship. Some people need to tell you your wrongs, your flaws as well, because if they don't, that means they don't love you. If you're always around somebody who's always telling you your shit don't stink, how are you going to grow as a person? 
how. I'm constantly asking my friends, you know, is this something I could do better to be a better friend to you? Um, did I do something to you that makes you feel some kind of way? Let me know. Put me on. Have you ever thought about the fact that Scorpio is a sexual sign and these people... Damn, I can't even read it. It disappears so quick. I hate that I can't even see... Um, Oh, there it goes. Have you ever thought about the fact that Scorpio is a sexual sign and these people are attracted to you for the Scorpio energy? Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I think that, because for a long time when I wasn't into astrology, I was just like, why am I always attracting Scorpios? Like, what the hell is going on? It, I just didn't, I didn't get it. So definitely, um... I, tr I feel I attract Scorpios because of the Scorpio moon that I have. But I, I think Scorpio moons and Scorpios are very different. Very, very different. Um, I think that Scorpio moons have a little bit more control over their emotions. And they're not as vengeful as the Scorpio sun. Um, we're kind of like secretive with our slickness and the, the other Scorpio sun is like raw in your face basically so to say but yeah um I've noticed in my experience they're not heterosexual and basically fluid pansexual yep they'll sleep with anyone yeah yeah yes yes definitely um that is true um yeah like do we really want to call narcs straight or gay or bisexual no it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because that demon inside them will do anything and everything to capture your soul you know um i've had you know narcs start get like i said getting undressed in front of me and they're women i'm like wait a, wait a minute you just slept with like 10 men last week what the hell you want me for and it's very scary they'll use narcs will use seduction to get you you know, they will, it doesn't matter. So yes, fellas, it happens to y'all too. I know, I know, I don't get a lot of men on my channel that come in here and talk about it. But yes, I'm sure they have some, some men had narc, um, um, narc males even try to get in their boxers, okay? They're willing to do anything and everything. They'll even be a narc who's not even attracted to you. Okay, I've had some narcs, you know, not a lot of, not a lot of people are attracted to big people, okay, as y'all know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a plus size woman, there's narcs out there who never even slept with a plus size girl who, who try to sleep with me, like, what are you doing, you're not even attracted to me, what are you doing, they're willing to, like they say, take one for the team, they don't care, they don't care if you're unattractive, they don't care if you're overweight, they, they're gonna do what they need to do to capture your soul, it does not matter, okay, so, yeah, it, they're, they're willing to do it. They have no boundaries. They will sleep with anything. Yes, T. That is so true. <laughs> yes, narcs are trisexuals. They definitely are trisexuals. Oh, my gosh, man. They're so easy. They're so freaking easy. But, yeah, I... um. I always feel very betrayed when this happens to me. I'm not going to lie. But, um, like I said, the friend that lives out of state, I don't answer her calls like that. Another thing that they do, they'll keep tabs on you. I noticed that. So, and they'll freak out. If you're not answering their calls, you're not answering their texts, they, ha they have to have constant communication with you. They need to know what the hell is going on with you. You don't answer your phone, and I noticed that this girl, I'm not going to say she's a narcissist, but the friend that's attracted to me, I noticed, um, yes, they do have a Jezebel spirit on them, Rhonda, that's very true. Um, I was actually telling my man that the other night, because I feel like he's attracted Jezebel spirit women in the past that tried to use him, <laughs> and he's just like, huh. Damn, what you say, the way you're describing these women, it's some of the women I used to attract before I met you. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, in black community right now, or Hispanic community, there's a certain image of a woman that 
that they've portrayed. Every couple of years, they change it. If you think about the 90s, I'm going off topic real quick. If you think about the 90s, a woman can have a flat butt and nobody's going to be like, she's ugly. Okay. You know, back in the day when we had like Aaliyah or, you know, Stacey Dash, very petite women, you know, who didn't wear makeup, who didn't wear weave, you know, natural beauty was beautiful at one point. But now we have like the Megan Thee Stallions, we have the Cardi B's and their bodies, you know, you know Megan Thee Stallion, her body is real, but a lot of these women, their bodies aren't real. It's not real. Like, yes, it's, it is political. It's political. People don't realize through social media, through television, through movies, they're telling you what is beautiful. They're putting this image in our children's heads of what beauty is and what you should look at. Then they meet a regular woman. She can have a lot of the qualities that they need or a regular man who doesn't have a million dollars and he's not scamming and he's not driving them, you know, a Maserati or whatever the case is. They're putting these images in our community, exactly, programming. They're putting these images in our community to make them think, if you're not this, then you're not good enough. And that's not true. Half of the people you walk down the street, they don't look like that. They don't have a fake butt. They don't have fake titties. They don't, they're not driving a Maserati. They're not, they don't have a million dollars in their bank account. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you, you, you're going after an image that is, isn't real. It doesn't exist. No one's coming out the wound. There's some people who are blessed, yes, to, to have shapes like that. But a lot of times, these women who have the fake booties, who have the fake titties, who, you know, are, are, are marketing themselves like that, they're they are the Jezebel spirit, okay? They are the narcissist. I'm sorry. Um... I don't want to say everybody is, but majority of them are narcissistic. They are. You have to be narcissistic to get that bag, as I say. You have to be. You have to always put yourself first. Some of the people have to do a lot of things to get the money. You have to scam. You have to betray people. Okay? This even happens in, in, in on Wall Street. You, you can't be 100% of a genuine person all the time to get your millions and your billions. Okay? There's not that many millionaires and billionaires out there who didn't do certain things to get up to the top, okay? Thank you so much, Carissa. Marilyn Monroe was a historic narcissist. She definitely was, but you know what's funny about Marilyn Monroe? I actually feel very sorry for her because she hated herself. Believe it or not, she hated herself. Yes, very demonic people, for real. The, a lot of, and it's, it's sad today, they say whole culture, is worship and I don't care if you want to be a hoe you want to be promiscuous that's your business but to promote that and to make it seem like that is the lifestyle everyone should take I don't like that shit nope I don't like it I don't like it at all and that's why I'm scared to have children <laughs> I'm very scared to have children um some days I don't even know if I want kids you know uh but I don't like that they're literally taking the Jezebel spirit or the narc and they're making them the poster child of what we're supposed to be. And our children are seeing this, you know? So it, it's disgusting to me. It's really disgusting to me. But um, but like I was saying, the narc will keep... Yes, I could talk in circles and come right back around. The, the narc will keep tabs on you, okay? And I noticed that this... Um, it's so damaging to the youth and grown women, 26 and older, promoting. Yes. Yep. Yep. I mean, I have a friend who's 22 and, you know, she thinks like wearing her little fluffy slides outside and wearing her long weave. And she got many, she has a lot of hair underneath. What are you wearing weave for? What are you doing? But she's wearing that image. So I said to her, you know what? No offense to you. You look like every other black girl walking down the street. It's like a uniform. Why are you why are you doing that? Oh man, you're right. Why I, I couldn't tell. You, you you see black girls who are maybe twenty and under or twenty five and under, they all look the same. Why? Why do you want to look like everybody else? I've always been a rebel. I'm the type of person, is everybody wearing this, then I'm gonna wear that. 
you know, so that that's just always been me, even from when I was a teenager. There was times where I was setting trends. I'll go to school the next then the next day. Oh, Angie wore those sneakers. I'm gonna go buy those sneakers now. But nobody was wearing them. I would go get a twenty dollar pair of sneakers, and next thing you know, you see people who are spending a hundred dollars on sneakers go weird that it's like be yourself start your own trends stop trying to look like everybody else out there you know but they use that narcissistic Jezebel spirit to capture our children and so that that way they're not going to be constructive they're not trying to be the lawyers and the doctors that you have to be or the healers they don't want that they want you to be the scammers okay they want you to be the scammers they want you to be the sex worker that is the image that they want for our society. But if you go into the Asian community, okay, what's that? What is that? What is your opinion on the trans apocalyptic? What's that? What's that? I don't even know what that is. Living a good life. Please put that definition. I'm not a person that tries to fake in front. Like I know what it means. Hey Leslie, how you doing? Um. The eyebrow fleek not <laughs> wait a minute now hold up no i have very thick eyebrows believe it or not i have to get them threaded but i also i fill my eyebrows in with pencil but i could wipe this off right now so my eyebrows are thick as hell okay i used to have a unibrow but yes i mean it's true everybody wants to have the the huge thick eyebrows i'm like i was born with that you know that is very true but li um, living a good life, please give me that definition in the um, comment section so I can answer it. Because I don't, I don't know what that, what that means. Transpocalypse? Po how do you say it? Apocalypse? Transpocalypse? But anyway, um, you know what? I think my laptop is right here. I'm about to Google that. Because I really want to answer that question. But y'all yeah, can just shoot questions um, at me. Cancel culture got people afraid to voice their pain yes they also want to silence us too that's one thing you know a lot of a lot of my friends um well i don't say friends but people who follow me that i know on um instagram or you know my everyone's saying go vote and that's cool but don't be mad at people who they don't vote some people don't vote you can't keep putting out shitty politi politicians out there and saying, vote for the lesser evil. Some people are not going to, it's like saying, okay, vote for devil one or vote for devil two. You can't, not everyone's going to want to vote. and Or not everyone's going to want to wear their mask. But that is, that's what they want us to do. I'm not, I'm not going to say who it is, but that's what they want us to do. They want us to basically fall in line, be like soldiers, listen to what we tell you to do. Don't question what we're telling you to do, okay? Y'all know exactly who I'm talking about. I don't want to say it because I'm going to shut my live down. One of my favorite uh, YouTube... Oh, there we go. I think that I... I think I almost lost you guys. What do you think is going... Who is going to win? Yes, I'm in New York. I'm from Queens, New York. Born and raised. Um, you know what's funny? I, I think it's possible Trump can win again. I know y'all don't want <laughs> to hear that. But I do think it's very, very um, possible that Trump can win again. But it doesn't scare me. Because I feel like this. Oh, you're from Jamaica, Queens? Sometimes I'm out that way. My, my, my man lives in Jamaica, Queens. Sometimes I'm, on, sometimes I'm on Jamaica Avenue. So if you see me on Jamaica Avenue buying some hair, <laughs> say, hey, girl. <laughs> um, I live, like, near LaGuardia Airport. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I live on that side of Queens, not too far from LaGuardia Airport. Uh, but, yeah, I feel like this. I'm not going to put all my trust into the presidency. My trust goes into God. My trust goes into myself, goes into my ancestors. And I'm not willing to just give up my freedom like that. I'm, I, I actually heard my man's, um, okay, there it goes. 
I don't know why it keeps reconnecting. Maybe because now I'm talking about politics, guys. I, it, it keep, the, the thing keeps dropping. But, yeah, um, I heard her say, oh, if we don't vote Trump out, I'm going to die. What? Please, please, please grab hold of your babies. And and to me, I feel like the president does he does he's not in control of my destiny. OK, he's not in control of my destiny. My God is in control of my destiny. I am in control of my destiny. OK, so there's a higher being, I believe, that is in con that's in control. So I, I, I some people look at the president as their God and it's like, what the hell is wrong with y'all? Where do y'all get that from? Don't you know that there could there could be things that happen to people that won't happen to you because you're spiritually protected? For example, look look at the the C situation. Okay, I ain't gonna say that word because I heard we're not allowed to say that word. But the C situation, if you think about it, there's people in your lives who passed away from that, but you didn't get it. You went out to work every single day, people coughing around you, all these things happening to you. I mean, I went to Miami. They said that Miami was a hot spot. I didn't get anything. I'm well, you know, so you have to have faith in your higher power and in yourself um, that no matter who is voted in, you're protected. And whatever's meant to happen is going to happen. Whoever is in position, whoever. Hey, Fritz. Let's see. G. Mary, we need everything we can to remove that clown. I understand. And, and I get it. But you know what's funny? I look at I look at them as a collective. I look I look at them as a collective. Okay. Um, I feel like every president, you know, everybody, they're all connected. They are all they're all running this. I feel like it's like that's the puppet. He's a puppet too. So whatever puppet they put in place, shit is gonna happen to us, okay? And there's things that we are going to be able to control, and there's going to be things. My thing keep dropping. Let me change the subject because I know it's not. I'm talking about this politics. They trying to shut my life down. Um, what is that? Let me Google that transpocalyptic question because I was like, "What is he? What are you talking about? I don't even know what that is." Um, I never even heard of it. So about the poly life, guys. So how do y'all feel about the poly life? I want to hear from the women mostly because we all know that men love to have more than one wife. So fellas, I mean, so ladies, um, would you like to have two husbands? Would you consider that? Do y'all think it's taboo for, or how would you feel if, you know, you're married and your husband has two girlfriends on the side and then you have two boyfriends on the side. Would y'all like that? Because I thought about that. I actually had a couple. <laughs> That's too much meat. <laughs> Girl, right? You think about your pH balance. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ugh. No, let, let me stop. So why I think about the poly lifestyle. So if you have more than one um, wife or more than one husband, I feel economically it can work. Do I think it's for me? No. Okay, I think due to me having a bad relationship with my biological father and then being raised by a narcissistic stepfather, I'm a woman that needs focus. I need one man <laughs> to focus on me. You know, um, I need that one-on-one. -on -one. So I, I am enough woman for more than one man, man. But when it comes to marriage, I picture myself marrying one man. You know, my, my man now is talking about, you know, I, I, I like that poly life. You know, I wouldn't mind having you and another wife. And I said, well, good luck. I hope you find your wives because they ain't going to be me. And, you know, he just gives me that look like, damn, you know, and, and that's cool. I, so I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think that is smart to think about it. You have a husband or, you know, you have a wife and then you have multiples. If you're sick and you can't work, they're always going to take care of you. You know, there's always going to be somebody who 
um, it can feed you, you know, there's always going to be some, but, but people don't, they don't talk about the jealousy that comes with it. There's a lot of cons that comes with it too. Women get jealous. Men get jealous. You know, I, I don't know. I'm sensitive. I can't picture, you know, <laughs> I can't say this on live. Can I, I can't picture having raw sex guys with more than one husband or more than one man. I just can't picture that. I can't. I just can't. I couldn't do it. You know, and then you're on your cycle, and then where your husband's going to go? You know, or if the man has, you know, the man has three wives, then that means all his wives are on their cycle. And then what if you have a wife who's pregnant, and then it's just, it's a lot. This is the things that I think about, you know, but I get it. I get it. it I do think the structure, it can work. I do think it can work economically and you know, they say that there's more women on earth than men. So there may be a time where we all going to have to share. But for right now, I'm not sharing. <laughs> I'm not, you know. And then people will say, well, you're dealing with a woman and a man who cheats on you anyway. So your mom will just get together. No, because actually, sometimes people just cheat for, because they're attracted to that person. But it doesn't necessarily mean that person is going to be good to run a household. Let's be real. Not everyone that we think about all the people you slept with or dated. They're all not marriage material. They're not they're not all protective. They're not all gonna be, you know, um able to hold down a household. So that that's not necessarily true. I had someone that I like, um, they wanted what? They were poly. Yeah, I met a poly guy off Instagram. So I recently spoke to him. He lives in another he lives in another state. And um, he was looking for another wife. He was like, yeah, I can definitely see you being another wife, you know, but I would want, I would want children. I already have, you know, three children with my wife, but I, we're looking, he said, we're looking for a wife. We're looking for a wife. So I'm like, hmm, where? I'm like, so that means you, your wife is bi, you know? I, um, I was attracted to him, but I was like, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a good match for you guys. This is before, you know, I got into a relationship. But I spoke to him recently, and he said he actually met someone online, and him and his wife feel that she's a good match. So they may, he may be getting his second wife. So, you know, it works. What is it? I was looking at that, that word. I don't even see it. How come you disappear? You didn't tell me the definition of the trans-apocalypse. Um... What's that? Definition. Oh, does anybody have any um questions before I get out of here? I would never put myself in such a stupid situation. They mostly say it's not all sexual. Yeah, it's not. It's not. The poly lifestyle is really about building community. It's really about um having a structure because even with the black community... Black American community sucks at that. Our our family structure sucks at this moment. Um, but I, I I don't I don't want to say I necessarily believe that people can be monogamous, but I don't think that that was our original nature. I don't think it was our original our original nature. I do think kings and queens, you know, back in the day, I think they did have multiple wives and they did they, they did have multiple women and men. They did. And that's what worked for them. I just don't desire to have that. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even read your um what did you say? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh okay, Sebastian, yeah, I see. I hope more of our people wake up after the election and stop believing in it. There's a lot of fakeness. There's a lot of fake stuff. Hey, guys. Don't forget to donate to me <laughs> on Cash App. But if anyone has any questions, let me know. Because I'm going to get off here in a cup. I didn't even eat dinner. I was sitting over here. I just finished my red wine. Um, and I have fun. I, I, um, I'll try to go live again once I have a topic. But y'all guys really got to watch out for these people. It's not always... Um, I'm going to look up this transpocalyptic apocalypse. 
situation. I don't know. Madonna's popping up as I'm looking this up because I didn't. I didn't see that you came back and told me the definition of it. But um, I, you know, you got to be very careful with these narcs and these these people because these people, you know, do you have a spice or herb collection? <sighs> I don't, and which is terrible. But I am into sea moss. I am into black seed oil, which is amazing. Um, and I do Yanni Steam, which is a blend of herbs. Women who have um, wound issues, you know, look up Yanni Steaming. So that's probably the only herbs that I do use. But I am very aware. I want to study more about the herbs first before I really start just taking them. But I do take, like pills that have herbs in it but like as far as like a herb blend and stuff like that no mm -mm, i don't but i'm i, I am into it i want to get i will i want to get more into it but yeah y'all could donate to me um on cash app the light um 777 on zelle and Ka uh, paypal neo angie 3000 at yahoo.com I do conversations. You can book me. It's fifteen dollars for thirty minutes, thirty dollars for one hour. We could talk about anything that you want to discuss. You just bought the black seed oil fritz. Yes, awesome. I'm t you got to stay on top of it. But also, what I notice is that when you do a detox or when you start eating better, it works better. But even if you're eating meat and all that stuff, it still does work. The black sea oil, I hate the way it tastes. I really do. I'm, I think I'm going to start making sea moss gels and selling them <laughs> to my friends. Um, because, you know, sea moss, some people don't like the texture of it and how it tastes. But uh, I'm thinking about uh, making sea moss gel. But if I start selling it, guys, I'll let y'all know because you can ship it. Um, but, yeah, black sea oil is the truth. It's helped me. Yeah, as you, some of y'all don't know, I have like cysts on my ovaries and it's helped me a lot. And I used to have long cycles. So when I started Yanni steaming and taking black seed oil, it is the bomb. Some of y'all don't know what black seed oil is. I think I have it here. I use this brand. This, let me tell you something, guys. This right here, this is the truth. I thought it was like they said it kills it, it cures everything but death okay this thing is the bomb I'm telling you I don't know what's in it but it so when that whole C thing started happening I was taking this I was telling all my friends you better take it it builds up your immune system is that um anti-inflammatory let me tell you, I used to get my cycle for like 10, 14 days. I'm down to about four to seven days. It's, it's that serious because I have cysts on my ovaries. So I used to have issues when it came to my cycle. So black seed oil. And I also do um, Yanni steaming. I did a video about this already. And I use, um, you can make your own Yanni steams, which would probably be better. But I use this. So look up Yanni Steaming, ladies, if you have any issues. Like some women have issues with painful sex or, you know, fibroids, all these, all these different things. Yes, please show the women in your life. Bladder rack? No, I haven't. I'll definitely look that up. Um, but yes, Yanni Steaming, it... I'm telling you, it saved my life. That it, it really, really did. And of course, you know, every woman. So when you have those issues, you have urinary tract issues. This is really good for urinary tract. I don't know if men could use it too, but it's cranberry and demianos. I don't know if you can see it. I got that from the vitamin shop. Take your probiotics. If you're having cramps and stuff, you can take raspberry pills. I take that too. Um, I don't even know why I never told you about this stuff, guys. And then, of course, ladies, to keep your pH balance. Also, I want to get into chlor chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, if you have, like, body odor or you want to just clean your system, chlorophyll is good. Um, so look that up. They even they sell it in the health food stores, and they also sell it, like, on Amazon. But just do your reviews before you start ordering because 
this stuff is so popular now that the C came around, everybody's um, grabbing all these different magic stuff. <laughs> You know, they so people are gonna be out there bootlegging stuff, so be careful with um what you order basically. But it changed my life, it really, really did. Um, and there's some women out there who want to have children, but they, you know, the womb. I heard about this what's it called, ovary and uterus cleanse. It's about $30, they sell it on Amazon. I'm about to buy that chlorophyll. Yes, 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 Nicole, that's what it is. Yes, it does. If you have like a um, hey strange fruit, if you have like um, like because of my um, my uterus issues, I get UTIs very often because you know the bladder and the uterus is right next to each other. So I get that, and I got sick and tired of going to the GYN doctor asking for antibiotics when antibiotics can cause you know it 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 just messes up your system you know for good bacteria. So take this cranberry and dominoes it clears it up quick it clears it up very very it stained my teeth so i only got one what stained your teeth oh the chlorophyll oh well maybe they have pills maybe they have chlorophyll pills on the on the market now what else you guys um boric acid yeah i heard about that i'm gonna look up this stuff wait what about what like I, I couldn't see what you were saying, but yeah, um, those those are the things that I do use because I don't really have like other issues. But sea moss, I think it has like what ninety six different vitamins that the body needs. Um, I have something called PCOS, Nicole. So it's like cysts on the ovaries. So when you have issues in that area because of the uterus, um, it causes bacteria and it causes me to get frequent UTIs. Sucks. And I, but I always know it because I'll just usually just be peeing like crazy. And but as soon as I pop one of these, it works. It, I would have to take about three or four, but Demianos works, and it's better to try to do it naturally. Yes. Yeah, so anytime you have um wound issues you're you're prone to get utis basically because the the bladder and the uterus is so so close so i have i done a vitamin check it's been a long time but i know that i have um i am anemic and um i do take like vitamin c and stuff like that and right now i'm doing um oh i have horrible energy what is it what am i doing Oh, I'm doing, this is B12 that I've been using. And B12 has been really working for me because, man, I be tired. Ladies, have y'all noticed, um, I don't know if y'all are into the full moon, but do you get your cycle during the full moon? Because I do. And I'm hoping mine doesn't try to come again because it was a full moon to be getting up October already. And that's when my cycle came. So y'all have to also pay attention, um... Pay attention to um, the full moon or the new moon. What is it? Cardamom spice and celery is good for you. Okay. I'm going to look that up. I'm going to remember that. How has Scorpio... Well, Scorpio season just began. I'm going to say Virgo season and Libra season was... Woo! Whoa. But October... Um, a lot was revealed to me in October. I don't know if that's been going on with you guys, but a lot has been revealed to me. Um, counter iron. Okay, so I was taking iron pills, and you know, iron pills sometimes make you constipated. <laughs> so that's why I stopped and I started taking the B12. But um, I'll t I'm, I'm going to have to find an iron pill that doesn't do that to me because it's so unpleasant. Who wants to be constipated because of iron? Ugh. It's terrible. But, um, but yes, so October was a weird month for me, I would say. Um, it went fast. Y'all notice how fast the time is going? October felt like a week. It was like you just blink, blinked your eyes and it went so quickly. 
red beets are excellent for iron oh no i hate beets maybe i can do a beet juice because then i can blend like some berries with it Ugh, you guys are good um but yeah so october went so fast and a lot was revealed to me to the point where i feel like uh, i need to cut some people off and, and they're not narcissists but you ever like didn't realize how negative some of your friends are or some of your family are it's like you love them but you're kind of stuck and you're just like damn i love this person but they're negative they're so toxic as hell and they try to i don't see i understand that sometimes we'll have drama in our life but one thing i don't like i don't like when friends and family try to drag me in their drama Mm -mm. you know what guys let me tell you i'm gonna tell y'all this story because this friend doesn't even which is crazy this friend doesn't even come on my channel but i'm gonna tell y'all this story y'all tell me so i have this close female friend i ain't gonna tell you her sign just in case she come up on here no no you know what i'll tell you she's a gemini she's a gemini because whatever she comes on here she's gonna know i'm talking about her ass yes you outgrow them so it's not like it's not like you don't love them anymore. It doesn't mean that you think you're better. But you just be... And it's weird because it's almost like the universal God tries to push you away from this person. Because shit starts to occur between you and this person. That's going to force y'all to bump heads or force y'all to part ways anyway. Right? So, <laughs> I know. Just go ahead and tell y'all. Damn it, I'm a Gemini. Look, 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 look. I have a lot of Gemini female friends. And my only complaint about Gemini females um, is is this. You know, I'm going to say that I, f I feel sometimes a lot of Gemini women have a hard time when it comes to, like, self-love. And men could be your downfall. If you're straight, men could be your downfall. And I understand we we love men we love men we love penis whatever the case is i get that but it's like put yourself first don't put men first always put yourself first so that's that's my number one complaint when it comes to my experience i'm not saying all gemini's are like that and it's like they're mad fun gemini's are fun i have a good time they y'all crazy as hell y'all are fun to be around I can go on vacation with y'all. I can have a good time with y'all. I can talk to y'all, stay up late, drink, and chat. And and y'all about your business. Y'all are go-getters. Y'all dress nice. Y'all are cool. Whatever the case is. Oh, all these Geminis in here. But I don't like when y'all put your man or you put a guy you like in front of yourself. No. Leo, we don't do that. We're, we're, we're narcissistic in a sense. We always put ourselves first. So you can learn a little bit from Leo because Leo, we're about the self-love first, putting ourselves first. So we're not going to, um, what is the word? We're, we're not going to um, belittle ourselves just to get that attention from the opposite sex. We're not going to do that. Even though they say we like a lot of attention, we, it's not going to be like attention, we get attention. We're going to put ourselves first and our well-being first. Don't put yourself on the back burner because, oh, I love this man. Oh, I love this woman. And no, no. Be a little bit more selfish and put yourself first. So that's my issue when it comes to my Gemini friends. It's like they'll be dealing with a no good man. And it's like, why are you doing this? Why are you always, if he call you, jump up. You going to stop your plans. For, why are you stopping your plans? Plan your life. Do you. You know, put yourself first, and whoever's meant to be there, they'll be there for you. Gemini's are loving, though. Y'all are loving, but start directing that love that y'all love to give to others, or you'd like to give to your lover, you know, give to your lovers. Put it towards yourself. Like, I'll have Gemini female friends. Like, I'll say, hey, girl, let's go out. Let's go hang out. Oh, I don't know, because um, someone still said he want to come over. I said, well, did he plan something with you? And they're like, no. I said, so you going to sit in the house all weekend waiting for a man to call you? Leo don't do that. Leo be like, listen, I'm going out. And if you want to see me, you can see me after I'm done. Okay? But when I'm with my Gemini female friends, it's like, why are you putting a man before you? What, what's wrong with you? You stopping your whole weekend for a man? Like, I 
know penis is good, but it ain't that damn good to be stopping your whole life for it. Okay. But anyway, so y'all gonna have to help me with this, guys. I don't. I. It's not that I don't love this female Gemini friend because she she is a good friend, but I think because I ain't grow up in the hood, guys. Okay. Yeah. I. I, I could or whatever y'all think hood may be. I don't think I'm hood, but I, <laughs> I think I got flavor. But I didn't really particularly grow up in the hood. So my, my mentality isn't hood. Like, my parents went to college. My parents, you know, like, people in my family own houses. They have wealth. They, 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 they didn't grow up in a, a poor place. And if they did, like my grandmother, she grew up poor in North Carolina. But she, she raised her children in the house. She, she had a good job and I so I was always surrounded by people who were educated and a lot of people think all oh, black people are hood. No, and there's nothing wrong about being being born in the ghetto or being born in the hood. There's nothing wrong with that because we don't get to pick where we're born. But it's really about the mentality. Sometimes people leave the hood, but their mentality is still the same, you know? So even though this friend, the Gemini, she did grow up in the hood, so her mentality, no matter if she's educated and she has a good job, but her mindset is still hood. So we we have this conflict at times because she's more about the gangster guy or, you know, the thug guy. And I'm like, why would you want a guy like that? You know what I'm saying? Why would you want to be with a guy who you could possibly get shot at? Okay, <laughs> you feel me? Like she's attracted. I'm more attracted to the healer, the teacher, the philosopher. You know, the nine to five guy, the man that is trying to help his community and build. Those are the kind of men that I like. You know, he could be. You know, like for example, my man. He's a, a professional fighter, believe it or not. But he's not. He's more nerdy. He's not gangster. He's not running around selling drugs or you know, pulling guns, but yeah, he can legally kill somebody because he's a professional fighter, but at this, and he's, he's a martial arts teacher as well, so it's like, you can deal with somebody who has that masculinity, but they don't have to be ghetto, they don't have to be cursing at you, so she's attracted to men who be cursing at her, who sells drugs, and it's like, you cannot build, <laughs> you cannot build a foundation, I love spinach, by the way, um, Nicole, I eat a lot of spinach and a lot of broccoli. So you can't, and beans. So you can't um, really build with somebody like that. They have, Even if you are a drug dealer or you are a thug, there comes a point where you have to lay that down and then you'll have to be, you know, a, a, a good citizen. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? And, and, and grow and, and do legal things to make a life so that way you don't have the feds running after you or you don't have your enemies running after you, okay? So, me and her, we, we bump heads on that, but, and then a lot of times when you're dating that gangster type, you're, they, they're dating that thug type, they're not going to wine and dine you in the sense of giving you love and nurture. Yeah, they're going to buy you that Birkin bag. Yeah, they're going to um, give you money for your rent, but they're not going to give you that love. So, like, I noticed that when I say in the summertime... You know, my man and I, we would go on, like, a lot of picnic dates because, you know, restaurants weren't open then and stuff like that. So, we would go on a lot of picnic dates. Gemini's or a trip, Angie. They really are. So, we would go on picnic dates. He would do a lot of romantic things with me, a lot of nurturing things with me. So, I noticed a friend started to get, I guess you could say, a little jealous because her thugs aren't doing that. They're not, they're not trying to, they're not trying to, they're not trying to do that. Thug is not going to go on a picnic date. They're just not going to do that. You know, so he would, he, before he would take us to like the fancy restaurants and stuff and give her money and buy her expensive bags or pay her rent or whatever the case is. But when it comes to that love and that nurture, you're not going to get that from the gangster. Okay. I'm sure that there might be some mobsters out there who, who wine and dine. Um, who wine and dine you, whatever the case is, who are romantic, but it's very, very rare. So, her and I are very, very different. I respect what she likes, but I don't like the comparison. And I noticed that men are her downfall, whether if it's her son or her baby daddy or her brother, men become her downfall. 
yeah, Gemini women are very codependent. Yes. And you see, every sign comes with something. All right. So don't think that I think that. Um, so we come into this world with all, all these things, but, but it's up to us to overcome them. But yes, they are very codependent. Gemini women are very codependent and she's still stuck in that. She hasn't healed. So she she feels she needs a man. It's like if she's not around a man, it's almost like she's going to start itching. You know, she has to be around a man. And she'll even ask me, like, how do you not see your man every day? How do you how do you not talk to him? And I'm like, because I'm whole by myself. I don't want to talk to my man all the time. And I don't want to bother him. I want him to go with his friends. I want to hang out with my friends. You know, my man's a Virgo. And I couldn't stand Virgo men. And I ended up with a Virgo, guys. Ugh, we'll talk about that another day. But, you know, we're very, very different. But, yeah, so she's always saying that. And it's like, I don't mind her being that way, but don't drag me in it. So she was with her baby father for a long time, right? So she recently um, finally left the bath situation. She moved out. I'm proud of her. She got her new place, you know. And but what I didn't like was she tried to ask me, did I tell her baby father that she was cheating on him? And I was like, that was the first red flag. That was this summer. And I was like, wait a minute, hold up. So we've been friends for a couple of years now. And you gonna ask me, did I go behind your back and have a conversation with your baby father? What are you talking about? Why Why would you say that to me? I would never come to you or I wouldn't even, that wouldn't, I would never think that if a man, I don't care who it is. If a man came to me and said, oh, such and such was talking about you behind your back and she told me that, you know, uh, Angie, you were cheating on me. I'm not going to believe that. No. You should know me well enough to why I would do that. All this time we've been friends. I've never backstabbed you. I've never done anything. And keep in mind, I'm a person, I don't go to people's house. I actually only saw her baby father maybe twice in the whole friendship. We've been friends for four years now. I've only seen him twice. And the one time I did see him, it was I, I was being respectful. I came to his brother's funeral. So this is like, I don't have this man's number. How? Why would I call your baby daddy that you just broke up with and tell him that you were cheating? It, it didn't make any sense to me. So, you know, I, 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 I was really turned off by that. That happened this summer. So recently, last week, she hits me up and she's like, hey, girl, let's go to brunch. It's my treat. Let's go to brunch. So I'm like, all right, cool. So then I say, well, I'm going to meet you at the restaurant. But she says, no, 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 don't meet me at the restaurant. I'm going to have this guy pick us up. That was a red flag for me. I'm in my head like... <sighs> Why is she going to have a guy pick us up? We have our own money for an Uber. You know, or I can take the bus to the damn restaurant. I don't I don't want this. I don't know this guy like that. I met this guy once because he's a carpenter and he put a lock on my door. So I was in my head like, should I still go? You know how you be thinking in your head like, this is going to be some bullshit today. Should I go? I didn't listen to myself. So... Whatever. He ends up picking her up first. He picks me up. He takes us to the restaurant. When we're getting out the car, he hands her $100 and says, Here, guys, I'm going to pay for your brunch today. So I'm like, okay, that's nice. Thank you, guy. You know, whatever. So after brunch, she says she wants to go to Target. So the restaurant where we're at was a targeted walking distance. But she said she wanted to go across town to another Target. And I'm like, Girl, why? We could just walk to that Target. She said, well, I think the other Target across town has more stuff. So she said, well, I'm going to call the guy again. I'm going to have him pick us up. I'm like, girl, you doing too much. Leave this man alone. <laughs> you see, Leo, we're very independent. We, we're we not going to call no man for that BS. You know what I'm saying? We would tell the man, oh, cash up us some money, and then I'll, I'll get there myself. Right? So, guys, she calls this guy again. So the guy picks us up. But when we get to Target, there's a line to get inside, right? So I said, well, I'm not waiting on that line. So um, he said, well, there's another store across the street. Maybe they have some something that, you know, that you're looking for. So he ends up taking us to another store. 
she finds the stuff there. He even gave her his debit card, guys. So this guy, he really likes her. He wants to spend money on her, whatever. So he gives her the card. He said, well, y'all, you know, you and Angie go and get whatever y'all want. I pay for my own stuff, right? Yeah, she just want to be around the guy. She just, wanna, she just wants to use the guy for his money or whatever the case is. So we get in the car. Around this time, it's probably about 5, 30, 6 o'clock at this moment. So the guy is so sweet. Keep in mind... The guy, the guy that's driving us around, he actually fixed, um, uh, he put a door, a lock on my door, um, and he didn't want to charge me. I offered to pay him. He didn't want to charge me. He said, no, 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 I'm friends with so-and-so, so I don't have to charge you. Don't worry about it. I got plenty of money. I don't need your money, Angie. So I'm going to be nice to this guy because I remember this guy doing me a favor. You know, couldn't locksmith wanted to charge me two fifty, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's a lot of money!" And he did it for free. But anyway, so I'm gonna be nice to someone. If someone is generally nice to you, you're gonna be nice to them, right? So we're in the, we're in the car at this time, about five thirty six. So he goes, "Are y'all hungry again?" I said, "No, I'm not hungry. We ate, we ate like around one thirty, so uh, I'm not hungry." But I said, "I can go for another drink." You know, if y'all want to go go get a drink, I could do that. So he turns to her and he says, um, do you have anywhere to be? She says, no, I don't have nowhere to be. I said, are you sure? She said, yeah, I don't got nowhere to be. Why? He was like, oh, okay, so let's go get, you know, some drinks. I like seafood. Do you like seafood, Angie? I said, yeah, who don't like seafood? He said, well, let's go get a drink. And then, you know, y'all can just take some food to go home for dinner. This guy is such a sweetheart. He's being like a gentleman, being nice. So I said, well, where you going? And, and, and the person who was in here who's from Jamaica, Queens, he said, I'm going to Merrick. So Merrick, there's a Merrick Boulevard in Jamaica, Queens, guys, right? <laughs> this is hilarious, okay? So there's a Merrick Boulevard in, in Jamaica, Queens. So, but then there's a Merrick Road in Long Island, New York, guys. So when he said, I'm going to Merrick, we're thinking Jamaica, Queens, because we live, we live in Queens. Guys, this guy drives all the way to Long Island, okay? <laughs> so now she's pissed. So I text her while we're in the car, and I said, well, um, what's wrong with you? Because I can feel the energy in the car. She wasn't talking. She's, <sighs> you know how them Geminis are. They be like, them Gemini women be get, it's like they, 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 um, their, their, what you call it, their, their blood pressure starts rising before they start flipping on you, right? So she's just, <clears throat> so I'm t I, I, I DM'd her, I text her, I said, what's going on? She said, oh, my boo, which she has like a drug dealer boyfriend, my boo, he's coming over later. I said, well, what time he's coming? This girl gonna say, oh, he coming over at seven. If you knew... Your man, your drug dealing boyfriend was coming over at 7. Why would you get in the car with this guy and we going damn near to freaking Long Island? So I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So the whole time is mad awkward in the car. She's not saying anything. You know what I did? I took my scarf, put it put it in the back of the car. I, I went to sleep in the back. I said, I'm not dealing with this shit. She created this mess. If she knew she wanted to see her drug dealer boyfriend... She should have just went home. She should have told the guy, listen, thanks for driving me to the store. Thanks for the food. Thanks for the money. But can you drop me home? I don't feel well. Make something up. But you're going to allow this guy to drive you all the way to freaking Long Island? It was just stupid, guys. So by the time we get to Long Island, she goes, well, I don't want to stay in the restaurant. I don't want to stay. Can, can you just pay for our, um, she, she's a June Gemini, guys. <laughs> So she said, I don't want to stay in the restaurant. Can you just buy our food and buy our drinks and take us home? Excuse me. Take us home. I, I just want to go home. So now she's throwing any negative energy at me like I did something. She's throwing, she's being rude to the dude. He's looking like he's lost. He doesn't know that she had some booty call coming over. She didn't, he didn't know anything. He was just trying to be nice. So, I get out the car to go use the bathroom. So, then I come out of the bathroom. She's not looking at me. She's looking all in the bag of the food. I'm like, you okay? Then I see her eyes is watering. So, I'm like, is she crying? Because I know that the drug dealer dude that she deals with, he's very verbally abusive to her. So, maybe he cursed her out in, her, in the text messages because she wasn't home yet. 
something happened. I don't know what happened. So I said, you crying, girl? She said, no, I'm not crying. I said, so why are you looking like that? Nothing. I don't want to talk about it. So I said, well, did you let him know you'd probably be home around 8 o'clock? It's like not a big difference. What's the, what's the issue? So she was like, I don't want to talk about it, whatever. So I said, okay, whatever. I, 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 I'm not going to get into it. So I get back in the car. By the time we got by the time we got back to my house, it's about 8 o'clock. So I'm texting her while we're in the car. She's not answering me. I DM her while we're in the car on Instagram. She's not answering me. So I'm like, why is she mad at me? I didn't do shit. So when I'm getting out the car, I say to the man, thank you so much. Thank you for paying for brunch. Thank you for the rides. Thank you for your hospitality. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for the seafood. Thank you for the extra drinks. You know, you're you're really a nice person. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you today. That was very kind of you. You did not have to do that. And that's because I was raised right. I'm going to say that, right? So he says to her, he goes, you see, you see, I'm not going to say her name. Let's just call her Gemini. You see, Gemini? Angie's a very polite person. She thanked me. She told me that I'm an, I'm a good person. You see that? So I guess that pissed her off because him saying that exposed her nastiness. And in my head, and guys, listen, I understand a lot of uh, us want to play that game because we know people like us. You want to take money from them and gifts from them, but that's not being a good person, you know. And it, and, and even if you do, be nice. Be, um, be, like, be, just be nice to people. People do something nice to you. Why are you going to mistreat them? And I'm looking, and, and that was for the first time I said to myself, I was like, wow, like, she's really not a nice person. This person has spent hundreds of dollars on her. And this person is going out of their way. On his day off, he's driving you around like he's a damn Uber. Because he's, he, he, he's slow. He's slow. I don't even know his sign, but because he likes her, he wants to do these nice things. So if you're being kind, if someone's being kind to you, why are you going to mistreat that person? You know, so I didn't like that she gave me that negative energy like I did something to her. So when I got in the house, I called her. I waited maybe 10 minutes because she doesn't live too far from me. I waited about 10, 15 minutes to call to make sure she got in safely. She didn't answer my call. I said, all right. She don't want to talk to me. Cool. Then I text her and I said, hey, girl, did you get in safely? She said, yeah. So when she texts me back, yeah, she's a user and she feels entitled. Angie, what a horrible woman. I would not associate. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I mean, 2020 vision because it really has showed me exactly. Um, okay, no. Okay, great. I'm going to get off here soon because my, my, I'm, like, I'm at 15% on my phone. But, yeah, um, it really showed me, like, damn, she really has a bad side. Even though she's nice to me, but what if I did something she didn't like? Or, she, you know what I'm trying to say? So, it's like, that's just weird. Like, why would you mistreat this dude? This guy is, is doing nothing. You're not having sex with him. You're not giving him anything. He's giving you free food and free money. Like, how could you mistreat him? So, um, be cordial, you know, be nice. So I text her and I said, well, did you get in safely? She said, yeah. She said, well, I made him apologize to me. I said, apologize to you. This is what she's saying in the text. I said, apologize to you for what? She said, how could he drive all the way to Long Island? He can't force himself on me. I told him he needs to stop that shit. And then he's going to tell me, oh, well, me and Angie were okay with it. You should have just had a good night. What was wrong? So it's almost like she's mad at me. So it's been a whole week. Today's Friday, going into Saturday, or maybe it is Saturday already. And we haven't spoken in a week, which is very rare because we, we normally text each other every single day. And it's like she's mad at me for something she created. All I did was wake up in the morning and go to brunch. Ain't nobody tell her to, to call this man. Nobody told her to take money from this man. And I never bring men. My, my man hasn't met any of my friends. Actually, he met one of my friends by accident. We happened to be in a restaurant, and my friend was on a date, and she was sitting at a table across from us, and I introduced them. But 
I don't bring guys around females like that. Not 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 people of, of, of significance. I just don't because of stupid shit like this. But I it made me think about her character and I was just like not only were you not, you're rude to this guy who is being nothing but nice to you, but you're being nasty to me. You got an attitude with me? What the fuck did I do? I didn't do anything to this girl. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She, she's, she is entitled. But I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not about to feed that to her. Let me see what y'all saying. <laughs> she likes drug dealers. Listen, listen, listen. If, you, if you're a drug dealer, you a drug dealer. That's cool. Whatever. I'm not gonna, um, you know, I, I, I don't have nothing against. I, I, I like watching crime shows and stuff like that. <laughs> You know, it, it's nothing wrong with that, but not, you know, nothing really good comes out of those situations like that. If you watch a lot of those crime shows, you see what happens when you're dating the thug, when you're dating the drug dealer. But yeah, guys, so what y'all think? Y'all think I should cut her off? <laughs> y'all think I should cut her ass off? Because I ain't gonna lie, like, I'm really annoyed by her. I'm very disgusted. I'm very, very disgusted at her behavior. Um... I, I just, I just, yeah, I want, you're, you're saying yes, right? Yeah, I'm very disgusted at her behavior because, um, you know, I hate people who, and a narcissist does this too. It's like, stop blaming everybody for what you created. You, She created this shitstorm, okay? And then when it started peeing on her head, she had an issue about it. You know, so I, I didn't like that. Um, so it's not the first time. The first time with the baby daddy situation, trying to put me in her drama. I have never put her in any of my drama. Never. She doesn't even know about the things that I go through when it comes to my own personal drama. And that's not being a friend. You know, I think sometimes we use our friends as therapists, and it's not cool. And... It's cool. I don't mind being there talking to my friends, but to use, to put me in her drama, to blame me. I didn't ask to get into this man's car. All I wanted to do was hang out with my homegirl and this shit occurred and now she's not talking to me, whatever. But anyway, but yeah, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I'm starving now. I had a good chat. Hopefully you were highly <laughs> entertained. Um, stay your asses in the house on Halloween. Um, those of you who are spiritual, harness this energy. Light your white candles. Write your attentions. Write down what you want for the next 30 days or for the next 30 years. Um, that's what I do when it comes to um, full moon energy. I write down what I want the changes and the things that I'm grateful for. I light my candle and that's what I do. That's what I do. A lot of you think it's witchcraft, but it's not witchcraft at all. Just like y'all pray, so I pray in a different way. You know, I I write it down, you know. Um, but yeah, thank you for all the herb um information. Please let's see. Let me see, let me read this. Hey, Ill Will, welcome to my channel. Blessings to you, too. Thank you. Thank you for donating. Oh, yeah, if anybody wants to donate, um, Cash App, it's dollar sign the light 777. Um, Angelic Powell should come up as my name. If you have Zelle or PayPal, it's Neo Angie. 3000 at yahoo.com if you want to donate but I had fun um I'll try to go um live again enjoy your weekend Leslie enjoy everybody later and have a good weekend guys I love you so much stay knock free